الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقبة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد All praises and gratitude are due to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator and nourisher and cherisher of this universe peace, blessings and salutations be upon our beloved master and leader Rasulullah Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <coughs> Last week, alhamdulillah, we shared some of the values that a person learns through the physical motions of Ramadan, mechanical motions of Ramadan, and that is depriving the body of food and drink and sleep. But there is a greater objective and purpose behind fasting. We are now, alhamdulillah, already in the second, second ten days of the month of Ramadan. Awsatuhu maghfirah. The middle of which are days of forgiveness. So how quickly, this is already the second Jumu'ah. How quickly have we already passed the first 10 days and entered the second 10 days now. May Allah continue to shower His mercies upon us and forgive us individually and collectively. So amongst the things that we learned from the month of Ramadan, <clears throat> two which we did not touch on last week, and that is in terms of proactive a'mal. So we learned some lessons how to control ourselves, our nafs, making sabr, controlling the tongue, etc. And now <clears throat> what we learned from the month of Ramadan by way of our a'mal, and that is the attachment to the Noble Qur'an which is, in, which is directly an attachment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the, 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 the Qur'an is the kalam of Allah the Qur'an is the kalam of Allah, the spoken word of Allah ta'ala we build an attachment with the, with the kalam of Allah we are building an attachment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this kalam of Allah, the, the Qur'an al-Kareem will bring much barakat, blessings in our lives, in our livelihood, in our families, by way of its recitation and any form of attachment. And this month of Ramadan is there for that purpose. Because let's be honest, how many of us really do recite Quran or study Quran or read the translation of Quran or the, tra or the tafsir of the Quran out of the month of Ramadan? So this month, we set aside that time and we build this relationship with the Noble Qur'an. The words of Rasulullah sallallahu the Qur'an will come shafi'an as an interce interceder on our behalf. So be amongst, be, fortunate, be amongst the fortunate ones who will, whom the Qur'an will intercede for us on the day of Qiyamah. Be amongst those servants when we get in the grave and when we get into our grave and load in our graves, then the Quran will be personified and give us company in our qabr. Be amongst those people when we are left behind in our graves and our friends and family have marched on and carried on back to their homes and enjoying their dawahs and enjoying the dua programs and continuing their lives. We will be left alone in our graves, be amongst those people whom the Qur'an will be an advocate for us by Allah Ta'ala and prevent any misfortune that, will come, that may come our way. Be amongst those people. And this is the easiest time we can do that by building this attachment with the Qur'an. In one day we should at least try, at least in the month of Ramadan, to complete one entire recitation. And it's not difficult. We complete a juz a day, one para a day, and we can finish the, the recitation of the whole Quran in the month of Ramadan. And we don't have to sit down dedicated at one specific time if we don't want to. We can stagger it and break it up 
Come earlier for salah. Read two, three pages. Read two, three page, pages after salah. And in that fashion, we can complete one juz, one para in one day. And then in that, in that we complete the whole Quran. At least once. We should be striving for much more than that. But the least we should be doing is at least once in the entire month of Ramadan. So this we learn. We learn through the month of Ramadan. Because a believer's heart is yearns and is attached to the kalam of Allah Ta'ala. We also learn from the month of Ramadan an attachment with our salah. This one and a half hours we spend or one hour we spend at night with the taraweeh and then later on before the fajr at the time of suhoor the qiyam or the tahajjud. This again we learn in the month of Ramadan. So build this attachment with this qiyam. Build this attachment with our salah. Build this relationship with Allah Ta'ala and take it on after the, after the month of Ramadan. So these are some of the things we will learn from the month of Ramadan. For today, inshallah, I, I want to discuss another aspect that is related to the month of Ramadan. When Allah Ta'ala brings the verses of Siyam in the Quran, which we recited many times, Allah Ta'ala immediately, the very next verse, and Allah says, Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran the month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. It goes on. And then Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When my servants ask you, O Muhammad Wasallam, regarding me, then tell them, I am very close by to them. إِنِّي قَرِيبٌ I am close to my servants. Insan should not think that we need a wasita. We need a, an in, intermediary. We need somebody, somebody or something in between us and Allah. Allah says, Inni qareeb. I am indeed extremely close to, to my servants, to my, my believers. Ujib. And then Allah Ta'ala explains what he means. Ujib ida da'an. When my servant calls on to me, when my servant and my banda calls on to me, I immediately will answer that. This is the promise of Allah. And Allah brings it in the context of the month of Ramadan. Actually, dead center of the discussion of the month of Ramadan. That means and that tells us that dua is part and parcel of the activities of the month of Ramadan. Amongst the different a'mal, amongst the different actions of Ramadan, we know the fasting, we know the taraweeh, we know the recitation of Quran. One of the a'mal of Ramadan is dua as well. Ad-du'a umukhu al-ibadah. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, dua is the core, the essence of all forms of worship. Worship that is not coupled with dua is void. Worship that is not coupled and presented with dua is void. That's why dua is amongst the important activities and amal of the month of Ramadan. And again, we do not need any human being between us and Allah. It is you and Allah. It is me and Allah. It is I and Allah. And Allah Ta'ala is the one who gave us our languages. Allah Ta'ala is the one who gave us our accents. Allah is the one who has given us the different formats and ways of expression. Use those and communicate to Allah Ta'ala. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانٌ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said ثلاثة لا ترد دعواتهم Three types of people whose dua is not rejected. The first on the list is الصائم حتى يفطف The fasting person until he breaks his fast. Until she breaks her fast. So, for the entire duration of the day, imagine the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when we raise our hands, that this dua is going to be accepted by Allah. Any other time of the year, besides the month of Ramadan, except with the exception of some, uh, uh, some auspicious occasion, we do not know with certainty whether our duas will be accepted by Allah ta'ala. But here is a promise. 
Here is a promise of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that these types of three types of people and the first in the on the list is as-sa'imu hatta yuftir. The fasting person until he or she breaks the fast. Subhanallah. We also we also understand and we also learn that a an accepted dua at a specific time is at the time of iftar. At the time of iftar when a person is sitting down ready to break his fast so you are in that you are in that moment of joy and happiness because you are going to be opening your fast and at the same time you are waiting with anxiety and anxious especially the children and you are counting the seconds and minutes no that is the time when our duas will be accepted pre iftar and post iftar immediately make that dua talk to allah taala don't waste those moments those way don't waste that time allah taala has placed the, his creation who are making dua for us we also need to make dua for ourselves wa tastaghfiru lahum al haytan hatta yuftiru and the, the fish in the ocean are making dua of forgiveness for us until we are until we break and open our fast so we as fasting people should be engaged in constant dua communication talking with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking allah ta'ala to forgive us to bless us ask allah ta'ala for our needs individually for our personal selves our families we subhanallah everyone's got something and some worry something that's on our mind that's troubling us and the the hal the solution the remedy the medication the the opening comes from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes we will access the world we will access the the means of the dunya we will go to the doctors and we will go to the for the to the towards the food and we'll go to all of these things that will give us that physical satisfaction but at the end of the day we need to turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala almighty allah and ask allah ta'ala so again allah is inviting us come my banda come my believer i will accept your dua all i need you to do is raise your hands i'm making it easy for you this entire month is a month of barakah this entire month is a month of barakah i am making it easy for you to accept your dua i want to accept your dua but i cannot accept your dua if you're not asking me allah can how is allah going to accept our dua if we don't ask him allah wants us to ask him and allah is making it he said i'm going to accept it just ask me again the most fortunate person will be the one who does not who does not capitalize on this opportunity and loses out then that will lead us to the next stage and what is the most important thing that we should be asking allah taala in terms of our dua amongst all the other things that we normally think of we want a home and we want to be financially secure and we want good health and good wealth and we want all the niceties of this dunya which is good rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana allah grant us the goodness of this world grant us the goodness of the world because the world came first the world is here first akhir is still going to come so allah grant us the goodness of the world and the goodness and the best in the akhirah so the chief amongst the things we need to be supplicating and turning to allah to for is matter of forgiveness the matter of forgiveness without forgiveness how can we get achieve anything else we need to have our sins and account cleared for us before it will be credited before it will be uh, the hasanat will be sent to our, our way we need to remove the sayyiat and again allah has made this a season of forgiveness we just said now that how the fish in the ocean are in dua and supplication while they are being fished and while they are being hunted by the you know the the fishermen they are making dua for us and in the process getting hunted imagine the kindness of allah taala tastaghfiru lahum al haytan allah taala lillahi utaqa allah has every day fi kulli yawmin wa layla every day every night allah has servants that he is continuously setting free from the fire of jahannam 
One of the things we learn is that when we come in the month of Ramadan, before we exit this month, secure, the, secure our forgiveness. Secure our forgiveness. We shared with you the curse of Jibreel, the Amin of Rasulullah, to that person who does not secure his forgiveness. So this is the month, Awsatuhu Maghfirah. These days, the middle days, not only the middle days, the whole month is a month of mercy. The whole month is a month of forgiveness. The whole month is a month of emancipation. But was specific focus during these first, middle and last 10 days. So now these are the days specific focus on the matter of forgiveness. Use that to our benefit. Beg Allah Ta'ala. Rasulullah said, Make tawbah and istighfar unto Allah Ta'ala. Because verily I do that in one day more than a hundred times. Abdullah bin Umar radiallahu anhu shares a riwayah. He said, Kunna na'uddu. We used to count sometimes Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one majlis, fil majlis al wahid, in one majlis more than a hundred istighfar and tawbah. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was infallible. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who had no sins. He is physically and practically showing us that we need to make dua, uh, dua of istighfar and tawbah unto Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala because this is the season of this is the season for the acceptance of our tawbah and our istighfar so brother our, our brother and our sister in islam don't let these tawani and these daqaiq these minutes and these seconds pass us except that we securing we securing from allah ta'ala that mercy and those blessings and the forgiveness and the emancipation from the fire of jahannam because once again, we remind ourselves that Allah has he's opened it up for us. Allah just wants us to take it. It's like a person has a treasure and you put the treasure out of your house. A foolish person doesn't take that treasure when it is out there free of charge to take it. So Allah has put it out for us free of charge. Allah just wants us to raise our hands once. The entire day du'as are accepted by Allah. At the time of iftar du'as are accepted by Allah. For, uh, during at the time of our salah, du'as are accepted by Allah Ta'ala. This is the month of Ramadan, today is Jum'ah. Before Maghrib, we have these multiple virtues, multiple merits. It's the month of Ramadan. We are fasting. We will be breaking our fast. And it is just before Maghrib salah, between Asr and Maghrib, on this day, Friday. It is probably the peak, the peak time for the acceptance of the du'a. Don't let these, don't let these moments go by just like that. Engage in the recitation of Quran, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And draw, draw from the treasures of Allah. Remember the, the statement of Allah. Remember His promise that when my servants want and ask about me, tell them, tell them, I am very close by. I am right there. All they have to do is just ask. Ujibu da'wat al-da'i idha da'an. I don't need the wasita of the next person. I don't need the wasita and the the intermediary of anything. This is the month of Ramadan. I'll accept you directly. I'll accept it directly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. May Allah keep us in salama until we reach the end of the month of Ramadan. May Allah ta'ala forgive us. Make us amongst those fortunate ones whom the creation is making dua of forgiveness for us. Whom the angels are making dua for us. And who are recorded in the books of Allah who has been, whom have been forgiven. And last but not least, may Allah make us amongst the emancipated souls from the fire of Jahannam. Wa akhir da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.